So we have an absolute ton of screwdrivers we're gonna look at today. And at first I thought this video was gonna be about finding an indestructible screwdriver. But what we're actually gonna do is talk about the top five things I look for when we're talking screwdrivers because there's so many different brands out there. And just to name a few, we got stuff like Tecton, Ulsa, Harbor Freight coming in with the Quinn and Doyle screwdrivers, as well as Ace Pro, Klein, tons of different Stanley, Craftsman, you name it. We got a bunch of screwdrivers here and we're gonna talk the top five things to look for when you're talking screwdrivers. So sit tight and we're gonna get to that list. So we're gonna start off with number five. And on number five, we're gonna be talking weight. So if you are on the job site and maybe you build houses, things of that nature, or you are an HVAC tech and you want everything right there at your fingertips, you might choose like a six in one or 11 in one screwdriver so that you can get everything that you need, fit this in your tool belt holder or in your storage case for your tools and have everything that you need there. So the weight on this is gonna be substantially different than if you had to carry around a 20 piece Ulsa tool set. You know, this set like this might be better fit for somebody that's gonna have their tools hang out in a toolbox. It's gonna to be relatively close to them. They are able to come back, grab what they need, and then do their work and then put it back in a relatively quick and fast manner and you don't wanna carry a ton of tools with you. So weight plays a big factor in it, and one of the lightest screwdrivers that I've been able to find is gonna be one of these Irwin screwdrivers here. Now, it's not the most strongest screwdriver. You can see some flex in there. It's got a plastic handle on it with that rubber overmolding, but this is really one of the lightest screwdrivers I've seen. Now, it's not necessarily, again, the most industrial or strongest screwdriver, but it is a very lightweight screwdriver. And so when you're talking weight, you know, there's a lot of different things to look for. That big set versus the functionality of a six or 11 in one and or just a very lightweight screwdriver. So a demolition screwdriver is gonna be really heavy and that wouldn't be the lightest thing to choose. So coming in at number five is gonna be weight. So number four, we're gonna be talking about the growth of your set. So are you gonna start off with like a six piece set here, which is very, very similar to the six piece Husky set. It also does have that magnetic tip, which you can use with something like this, where you can magnetize it, and then that would allow you to pick up other metal objects. You can quickly demagnetize it, and then it won't pick up metal objects. But a set like that is just six pieces and you can't grow it. You know, if you were to pick up something like an Ulsa Tools, you get 20 pieces and then you're done. If you get a snap-on screwdriver here, you know, they have tons of hard handle and comfort grip so you can grow that set to the application that you're gonna use. Or even like the Tecton one. So if you haven't checked out some of the newer Tecton ones, you know, this kind of partially started the video where I was at SEMA and I talked to them. They newly released these screwdrivers with that fiberglass reinforced handle and they are actually really strong. Some of these are made in the USA and so when it is competing with something potentially like a snap-on, you know, this comes in at a relatively good price point and you're allowed to build your set not only in the black oxide, but you can also purchase the chrome. And the difference between those two would be the rust resistance on this versus the black oxide, which you might have to oil down. But you can refinish this where the chrome is really unforgiving. If chrome ever flakes off, you know, you're done. But the black oxide, you can go through a bluing process and you can kind of self-heal this. But again, that's just an option for you. So the ability to build your set would say Tecton or Snap-on or even Gear Wrench is really different compared to like a Doyle or a Quinn or even 
another Stanley product because some of the Stanley products have smaller sets but also do have bigger products. So number four is definitely the ability to grow your set. Number three is going to be the use. What is your use case? So, you know, electricians and other HVAC techs like to use Klein tools. Now, Klein is a great brand and I have no real issues with it. But the price on a Klein tool, while it is higher, are there other things that are comparable? Well, you know, I think some of the best money spent on screwdrivers would be one of these Ace Pro ones, which is also very similar to a DeWalt screwdriver. These offer some of the same functionality and flexibility. You know, the wear is gonna depend on the person that uses them. They also do have lifetime warranties on some of these things, but you don't wanna be spending your time warranting out a product because a warranty is only as good as the product because you gotta take it back to the store and convenience does come down to factor. So, you know, the ability to look at the use of the tool would be, is there that tool or is there something very similar to it? Now the hard handle is gonna be very well used in an area where things are going to be rubbing up against this. You might have different oils or materials or chemicals that this hard handle is gonna handle a lot better than say a soft grip handle. So that gives you the choice of using the right screwdriver during the right application but also know that while well, this can take some impact and is resistant to chemicals and temperature, these aren't so much resistant to that, but these aren't as resistant to an overall abuse situation where a demolition screwdriver is going to be able to take impacts as well as should have a stronger actual shaft for the screwdriver, which would allow for prying, banging, just, you know, whatever you're going to do, the demolition screwdrivers are probably some of the strongest screwdrivers. They don't always fit in the tightest of areas, but that's something to definitely look forward to is what are you going to use your screwdriver for? Because you would never try to use this on some sensitive electronics. You're going to want to start looking what you have for precision and smaller items so that you can get into tighter areas. So that might be something that you want to look at is, you know, is there a kit out there that gives you the flexibility of having lots of different bits and also cover you for electronics, you know, something like this Tekton 135 piece, every bit included in this is a good option for you. Or maybe you just need the functionality in a small package and be able to throw that in your tool bag. I've really actually liked this no-name brand that I picked up at Menards. This has been pretty decent for me, and I throw this in when I go to the relatives and other family members' houses. You know, well used, and it still doesn't look that abused. So number three was, what are you gonna actually use your screwdriver for? Number two is gonna be the grip. So grip comes down to different things, like how is this gonna be resistant to chemicals, temperature change compared to a soft grip. Now, that soft grip, again, is going to come down to showing where. You know, just my fingernail can show marks in here where there's no marks from a fingernail in the Tekton screwdriver handle. Now, that would be the same for, you know, the snap-on hard handle here. No issues with that. But if you pulled out a gear wrench, you know, you can start to see marks in that handle. Now this is definitely more comfortable to use over time. You know, it has a nice trilobe feature. Thought that these two were actually gonna be really close, but they really were not the same once I looked at it. You know, this has a black oxide finish, which would require you to do a little bit of cleanup on, but really when you start looking at the surface of these, a black oxide one, might be better for you in the sense that you know there's not going to be any glare from the chrome because oddly enough believe it that chrome can be bright and shiny and if you hit that with the right glare from light you might have problems where the black oxide finish you won't have that problem now the also tools kind of just gives you the option to buy a 20 piece set where the tekton screwdrivers 
allow you to get not only the black oxide, but you can purchase a chrome one. Same goes for some of the snap-on ones, although the most prevalent ones are the chrome. You know, you can look around and you can find the black oxide. So that really, at the end of the day, is going to be a personal preference when it comes to the shaft, whether you want that as chrome or black oxide. But the handle, you know, that really comes down to, again, a personal preference, but you can't change that that is going to affect the overall functionality of a screwdriver because something like this used every day is not gonna be as comfortable as like the Klein grip here. But some people might really not like that rounded grip and they might prefer that tri-lobe that they're going to get on like a gear wrench or an Olsa. And so that grip is very, very important. You know, the Craftsman one, Everybody, I think, from the 80s and 90s is familiar with the Craftsman USA screwdriver like this. It might not be the most comfortable, but it might be the only thing that you know. Craftsman did come out with some other screwdrivers like this big chunky grip here. Honestly, I never liked this. I bought this because of the name, but I never could get myself to use this grip. It was just really oddly shaped. I thought it would work good. It's probably a great screwdriver, this was just coming down to a personal preference that I couldn't stand this grip. So before you walk out of the store and purchase a screwdriver, it's really nice to be able to touch and feel it and see if that's something that you could handle and use over time. So that grip is really important. So make sure you're choosing the right grip for your application and make sure that it feels good overall in your hand. Number one is gonna come down to price. Do you need to spend hundreds of dollars on a Snap-on product or a Klein product? Maybe you do. Maybe this is the thing that you're going to use every single day and you need to spend hundreds of dollars on a screwdriver. Everybody else in your field uses it. Doesn't necessarily mean you need to use it because there's things out there. People might agree or disagree that the Ace Pro here is very, very close to the Klein screwdriver. I think all in all, the Klein and the Snap-on hard handle are two of my favorite screwdrivers that I've ever used. You know, I've used the Craftsman acetate handle here many, many years, but it's because that's what my dad used. And that's not necessarily the best thing, but it's something that has memory and sentimental attachment to me. But I've really honestly been liking the Ace Pro it's really, really comparable to the Klein at like half the price. Now there's other options out there that I really thought that the gear wrench screwdriver was very, very close to the Ulsa tools. And it actually was, but then it came down to the difference in what the material was, or at least the finish on these screwdrivers. And all in all, there is some difference to them, but the grip itself feels really the same. So if you like the feel of a gear wrench one, you're really going to like the feel of an Oso Tool ones. Now, the Quinn ones are so close to the Husky ones that if you like the Husky ones, you can feel that at Home Depot. And then you could save a buck or two and buy the Quinn ones because the diamond tips on these are really the same as these. And that tip, while it works to help grip the fastener, it does wear over time. But a lot of these have a lifetime warranty, so that is something that I'm not too worried about. But what I can't change is the price after the fact that I bought them. So guys, that wraps up the top five things, what to look for when you're looking for screwdrivers. Again, it came down to price, grip, use, the ability to grow your set, and the weight of the actual screwdriver. So just make sure you're looking for those things when you're looking for your screwdriver. And if there's something that I missed that you feel is really important when it comes down to screwdrivers, or maybe what your favorite brand of screwdrivers, go ahead and let everybody know down below in the comments because information really helps people grow their knowledge base as well as picking the right tool for the job is something that you should always do. And I got a ton of screwdrivers here. I might not do everything that you do with them, but I do some things very well with these things and I've been able to survive for many years without killing myself or shocking myself. So make sure you're choosing the right tool for the right job. And as always, guys, work smarter, not harder.
and I'll catch you in the next video. And I bet you're wondering, what is that bolster nut for on the end of the screwdriver? Sometimes you've seen it on the end of the handle here. Well, that's to add extra torque, but honestly, I don't think I've ever used that. And even these Craftsman one, they're in the shape of a hex. You could put a wrench on that, but again, never use that. And you and I both know we tore into that Doyle screwdriver, and that striking cap is just that. It's a cap.